my concern is that the debt fueled growth in China, especially of the last five years, is coming to, I wouldn't say a screeching halt, but it's coming to a significant slowdown. And I think I am concerned that China, from the fall of 2008 and early 2009, was basically on a debt stimulus binge. Basically, growth was being pursued in the Chinese economy through continued investments in infrastructure, through continued real estate lending, primarily through a big push for leverage and debt through the state-owned banks. And in fact, the state-owned banks were also setting up off-balance sheet vehicles what is called a shadow banking or in, in Chinese terms, trust companies or wealth management products. So that there was a lot of leverage that was also building up outside of the regulated balance sheets of these banks. And I think all of this was known to the political system. They knew that banks are raising a lot of debt. They knew that deposit rates are very low. So the returns are not going to the households. The returns are staying with the banks. They knew that this is creating this sort of a big real estate state investment and now they are hitting they are seeing that the brakes are hitting on this investment and debt fuel engine and the key question that i think we have to face is will china act decisively recognizing that a further slowdown of risk by half a percentage point one percentage point two percentage points over the next two three years could really hit its banking sector hard they could start seeing a big rise in their non-performing assets. Some of them may start making losses on their off-balance sheet vehicles. Many of these banks have large state ownership. There might be a need for government injection. And what is, I think, making the Chinese situation particularly difficult is that in the process of getting the banks to do this lending, they've also made corporations very leveraged, They've made the municipalities in China very leveraged as they were doing these expansion programs. And the question is, how much of all these debts will end up with the federal government? Think of all the commodity producers, such as Australia, Canada, who have been South Africa, which have been sort of major suppliers of various kinds of commodities to support the infrastructure investment in China. Just by the sheer size and the growth of the Chinese economy, these economies themselves have had a big stimulus from China. So they will experience a slowdown. If Chinese consumption is not keeping going to keep pace, especially at the very wealthy end, let's say the property prices come down and many of these uh, wealthy Chinese actually lose the paper money on basis of which they have been spending. It could be a big shock to the luxury goods market of the world. It could be a big shock to many, many other parts of the, of the global economy. So I think given the size of the Chinese economy and the stimulus that it had, the support it provided to the rest of the world in the last five years, I'm concerned that if China doesn't get its act together in cleaning up its debt, debt boom, and the bust that might follow in a very expedient manner that the world may be in for a further global shock. We've had several in the last five years, first from the United States, then from Europe. Uh, the lack of growth in Japan has always been a big shock, I think, since 90s to the rest of the world. But I think if China was to lose its act and, and you know, I think it's going to be a slowdown, but suppose it, it has a, something like a Japanese crisis, a slow brewing debt problem that they c keep refusing to recognize and hope that things will improve. But banks are not doing any interesting lending. Ultimately, the growth is going to slow down and we might see, again see like a very extended lost decade kind of phenomenon.